Hello everyone, welcome to episode 11 of Witness Rugby Chat. I had a break of a, a couple of weeks and I'm sorry for there being no show last week. Um, to be honest, I thought I took the decision not to record last week just because of all the hysteria going on around the uh, the proposed takeover. Um, I didn't feel that it was uh, appropriate really to do, to do one last week. Um, Obviously, there's been a lot of discussion and a lot of uh, speculation regarding what's going on, and of course, there's only really a few people who actually do know the situation, and that is the the people that are, uh, are at the club. I think the reports about administration, I thought that was pretty poor, to be honest, early this week, um, especially with no comment from from the club on on that front, and. Certainly, I'd, I'd heard a couple of murmurs around that sort of subject last week, but certainly nowhere near enough for, for, to prompt me to, to, to run a story. So um, it sounds like after the season launch event last night that things are fairly calm, which is which is good. Um, of course, we've had the, uh, I suppose, two proposed owners who have, have reportedly uh, pulled out and, and walked away, which is... You know their choice to do so um but I, I do believe that there's still interested parties so we'll see how much that develops over the coming weeks but the most important thing is you know we're only a week or so away from the start of the season and i think the good thing is is that i, I interviewed kieran pertel yesterday and we'll have that full interview um shortly in this podcast Um i think the good thing is is that although maybe as fans, everyone's been taken in by the hysteria of the takeover speculation. It doesn't appear that the coaching staff and the playing staff have been affected by it. So um, I think that's that's one positive. Um, so yeah, so it was the Championship and RFL season launch event on Tuesday in York. And, and I caught up with Kieran Pertil to ask him about how he's found the job so far um, and his hopes for the season. Um, here's that interview now. Yeah, you now you're looking forward to the to the season. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know we had a couple of pre-season friendlies under our belt now, and I'm quite happy we're we're out with the squad. Uh, we've got one more game to go, and then we, we look forward to uh, our first game against Halifax. And uh, you know the boys are getting excited, and you know it's good to see that the fans are getting back on board with us as well. You must have been pleased with with Sunday, you know, against a pretty strong Warrington team. Yeah, I was. Um, you know, we, the week before we, we were pretty good the first half against Old KR, uh, and then we made a lot of changes and, and similar again against, against Warrington. But uh, you know, I think probably for 35 minutes of that game, we we were the dominant team. Um, probably a different story if we have to play them every single week because they've got some fantastic players there, Warrington. Uh, but I was really happy with the progression we're making. Uh, I was happy with the improvements we made from the week before, and you know, certainly heading in the right direction. Have, have you found it obviously when, when you when you were appointed? Obviously, the squad was largely in place. So you've been getting to know the players and, and figuring out the, the best systems I guess and how it all works how have you found it, the journey so far? Yeah it's been really good uh, obviously you go in with some uh, preconceived ideas how you, how you want things to go and, and certain people in certain positions and when you actually work with them day to day you, you have to be adaptable and, and that's what we've done we, you know, we, we've changed a few things and tweaked a few things here and there and you know, we'll probably do that all year to try and get the best out of the individual um, you know, there's no point having a system and, and players not being able to play it we have to get the best out of that individual player which helps the team as well so uh, yeah it's, it's 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 been good it's been a challenge but they you know the players have bought into it they've been fantastic their attitudes have been first class and uh, we're just really looking forward to the season starting now. Yeah. And Jack Owens I suppose one of those players that you talk about you know he's, he's, he's played at standoff in the, in the friendly talent is that was that something that came to you during training or I mean obviously you'd have worked with him at Lee yeah, I think um, the the witness fans will be surprised, you know, in in Jack coming back and the, the changing him as a player. Uh, predominantly, he left as a, as a winger and a, and a fullback, uh, but he's been away for, for a couple of years now. He's, he's matured off the field and he's also matured on the field. He's a very rounded player and he's a very smart player. Uh, and even last year at, at Lee, you know, he played in the centres. He played at nine for a spell, fullback, halfback. So I knew what I was getting with with Jack, and it, you know, it's invaluable to have people like that who can be versatile as well. And you know, so far he's done a fantastic. Job for us. Yeah, I mean, especially with this injury record over the last few years, hasn't been particularly great. So I suppose having that versatility is is, is a bit important, I guess, just in case 
Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, that's part of pre-season games. We, we, we swap some people's sides and swap some people different positions to have a look around. And You, know, you, you need to, to, to know when you get in the season what, what you've got within the squad and that flexibility. And you know, it's, um, you know, Even with staying off with 25, 26 players, it, it's not a massive squad over, over 12 months. Uh, and we need to be able to cope when there is injuries or you lose players during a game and people have to swap. So you know, all, all that is part of pre-season. Uh, and so far, it's all gone well. And you know, I said before, I'm, I'm happy where we're at the moment. Yeah, and I know Tom Gilmore's not featured in, in either of the games so far. Um, is he injured or is he just? Yeah, we had uh, Danny Crave and Adam Tom both had uh, shoulder surgery in the off season. Um, you know. The, Danny's looking like he, he might get a run out this week so it'll be good to get him back on the field and, and Tom's probably just a couple of weeks behind you know, we, we all heal at different different uh, time scales and uh, he's done a little bit of joining in with the team but it's just making sure that he's right before he comes back so again when he comes back in it'll be another boost for the squad to, to get a, a, you know, a player who, who's a good player within our team he's got experience of the championship and uh, you know he's an organiser and a talker so it'll be good to get him back on board and uh, speaking of big boost must have been a big boost yesterday when uh, Anthony Gellin arrived yeah, it was. Uh, you know, it's. I think it's been in the papers, and there's been lots of rumours flying around. But we've had regular contact with Anthony. Uh, you know, I've, I've, the the modern lifestyle we have. I've been sending him the training sessions, the games. So he's been having a look what we've been doing. We've been in contact, and we always knew he was coming back. But uh, yeah, it was a, it's a good boost to get him actually get here, and uh, we'll see how he goes this week, and hopefully get him on the field this week. I know there's a little bit of uncertainty about the off the pitch stuff at the moment, but is there a possibility for any new signings, or is that anything you're looking at? Uh, well, uh, the squad we've got at the moment, uh, we're quite happy to start off with. Uh, you know, it's important to give those guys the opportunity to prove themselves. I'm, I'm probably like any coach, particularly the, the stage that I come in. We, we always want to bring more players in. Uh, we're a bit greedy that way, and you, know, you can always strengthen the squad. So I imagine as the season goes along, uh, you know, uh, regards to injuries and form and, and other things, we, we'll look to try and bring the right players in when we can. Yeah, I know. I think Leah close to announcing a, a dual reg partnership, and is that something that maybe you'll go down? In in terms of loaning players from Super League, maybe? Yeah, it's an option. Uh, I think, you know, over the years now, a lot of championships of clubs have had a, a benefit from that. Uh, you know, you look at Featherstone with Leeds last year, they had some, some good success with it. So, you know, it is something as a club we, we, we've discussed and we're talking to it to a couple of clubs. And, uh, you know, if it's a route we need to go down, then, you know, it's something we'll look at. Yeah, and obviously one player you brought in is, is Dom Speakman, is, is on trial. Is, is he going to get another chance this, this week to stake a claim for a, for a deal? Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, have a look. I might bring uh, the squad down a little bit this week to make it a bit more game realistic we, we've run with like 20, 23, 24 players so I might bring it down to 20 um, you know but Dom's you know, he's, he's been great in training he just pops in when he can uh, he only works around the corner and his attitude's been good and you know the games he showed up okay so you know if he, if he gets another opportunity then he does if not um, you know we'll, we'll sit down and speak with him in the next couple of weeks yeah. and, and I know you know Toronto are going to start the season's heavy favourites but you know I guess every coach will say that we can win the league as well yeah, I certainly think we can. Uh, obviously, Toronto uh, have spent a lot of money and they've recruited really, really well. And you know, you've got to factor in the travel and all the, that comes with it as well. So it's you know they will be favourites, um, but you know we're up there as well. Um, and I think the new format's a little bit different this year um, as well. It, it's not all just about finishing top. Or well, that's you know ideally where you want to be. It, it's about peaking at the right end of the year. And I think um, we don't need to look any further than what London did last year. They weren't favourites for it and they took their opportunity and they're in Super League. So I'm Kieran Pertel there, um, speaking to me in York on Tuesday, um, a, a, a pretty sound interview I thought, um, interesting about, it doesn't seem too convinced about Speakman, interested about potentially looking at signs as every coach is of course, there's not really been any since Pertel took over apart from Jack Owens and his comments on Jack Owens I thought were also interesting, um, Owens of course at Widness traditionally being a fullback or, or a winger and um, very much looks like he's a candidate for, for playing standoff this season and I would expect him to probably start the game against Halifax at, at standoff. Um, it appears that Craven, Danny Craven should be fit for this weekend. Uh, it doesn't sound like Tom Gilmore is going to be ready for a few weeks so um, some interesting options there and that may impact on the first choice line and you know you may remember from however many podcasts ago we looked at the start in 13. This was before Inu and Gellin had been confirmed and of course they both were confirmed so actually that starting 13 that um, we put we put on the board is is, is probably possible um, we had Gilmore and Craven as first choice and 
Um, it may be that Owens and Craven proved to be the half-back pair. Another reason for me not doing the podcast perhaps last week was because I, I, due to my work commitments, I wasn't able to go to either of the uh, the two friendlies so far, Hull KR uh, and Warrington. So um, I was a bit disappointed in myself, I suppose. Um, and obviously I didn't feel like I could give a, a fair judgment on those matches, but from the people that I've spoke to and in you know, witness fans and also neutral fans, it would appear that, that witness made a good account of themselves and um you know that's that's a, a positive sign against but certainly against a, a strong Warrington lineup as well. Um, especially when you consider that the witness championship team coming into the season. So um so yeah and obviously great to have Anthony Gellin um, arrive on Monday. Now I mentioned before about the takeover speculation. One of the things that that had sort of been rumoured last week was that maybe all the speculation was why Gellin wasn't here yet, and obviously that's been um, comprehensively um, dismissed now. That there was anything wrong with that, and it's it's great for witness. It's a great sign, and very. I still don't think maybe it's been. I think it's still being understated maybe on, on how big of a signing Gellin is actually for Championship and, and for witness, and it'd be great to see him. Um, how he gets going hopefully this weekend against North Wales but if not in, in the game against Halifax because we've got a really tough start to the to the championship with Halifax uh, Toulouse away and, and Toronto in, in Newcastle um, again if you've not seen it the Toronto game will be on Sky in Newcastle on Saturday 16th February so that's good for those who, who can't can't make it be an interesting game um, so yeah we're finally getting there rugby's finally around the corner and, and on that note talking about Anthony Gellin in the centres but his centre partner is, is Chris Nini and I managed to catch up with him earlier this week as well here's what he had to say so Chris uh, have, you, have you found pre-season uh, obviously new coach yeah it's been tough um, a good tough I think it's a, um, the type of training that some of the younger boys aren't used to um, the older boys are obviously used to, have, have uh, been there and done that so it's good to get that back in the system but the boys have been been awesome there's been no complaints everyone's just putting their heads down and working hard yeah I mean obviously it was a big decision I suppose for yourself to make in in terms of staying with witness with after relegation and whatever and I suppose now people will be looking at you as one of the experienced the key players is that a, a sort of pressure that you'll thrive on you think this season uh, I don't see it as pressure myself I, I put myself there to obviously I, I see something in this team and in the club and and I see something which is, which is only going to be good, good things for the future. And um, for myself, obviously being the one of the senior players now, it's it's an automatic role for myself to to put my hand up and, and lead where I can and, and and give advice and help out where I can to the younger boys and and the boys coming through the grade. So I don't I don't see too much pressure. I think it's just part of the job and just. I think it's something to look forward to. I'm, I'm excited and, and I can't wait to rip in. I mean, obviously, the academy is one of the, the biggest strengths of, of, of Witness. And, you know, it'd be a really big season if a, a large number of those players can really establish them as, as first teamers. Is, are you, have you been impressed yourself with the talent that, that the club has got? Yeah, since since I arrived last year, well, two, two Christmases ago, um, I said how, how good our young boys were. And, and this year, Bert has done done right by, by the, the boys have been playing and performing well they, they've been training training with us on the regular which is only good for them and, and good for us obviously it strengthens our our side and our numbers and gives us a bit of depth so I think um, any of them if, if uh, touch wood anything happens to any of our players and, and, and we need them to step up we know they can and fit in that role and, and um, the boys around them will be sweet yeah uh, obviously Anthony Gallery arrived yesterday pretty exciting I mean I don't think there's a better centre partnership than, than you and him you probably did probably in Super League as well even uh, you must be excited about the, the potential to be playing opposite sides uh, with him and your team yeah we we had a few sessions at the end of last last year before Christmas and uh, New Year come come along and um, before he he went home for for his baby so it's, it's good to see him back yesterday in training and um, yeah, he's he's top great player. He's been there. He's, he's won won uh, most of the accolades you can win over here in the Super League, and and to have his experience, and especially on the other side of the field, it would be great to to even up even up the sides for for us as as players and the work rate that he he brings, and and obviously his ambience and he's he's such a character. You never know what you're going to get when when you see him in the morning. He, He's either cracking jokes or he's singing. He, he could do anything. He's um, life of the party. Yeah, yeah. 
and, uh, and yourself obviously had a few injury issues last season. Are you, is everything all right now? You're you fully fit going into the season? Yeah, I've got a bit of a tight calf at the moment, so hopefully that, that pulls up okay for round one. But um, get some scans tomorrow, see how that goes. Was that was that a training thing? Was that because you were in the squad, weren't you, for the, yeah. the first friendly, but then you yeah, pulled out? Yeah, it, it happened. Captain's run for that game, so oh. it happened the day before the game. Um, last week I probably could have played, but I think we're, we're not we're not pushing it too too much. We don't want to make it any worse than what it might be. So. We're just taking a step at a time and hopefully uh, it's not too bad. So that was Chris Lunu speaking at the Championship launch in York on Tuesday. Um, not really much more to say from this episode. I hope you enjoyed those interviews. Um, looking ahead into the next coming weeks, obviously when the season starts there'll be a lot more discussion around matches and, and what's gone on. I've still not 100% decided the format of what, how I'm going to do things once the season starts. I may do a, a Sunday night maybe podcast rather than the Wednesday I might do two separate ones um, I might just carry on with the Wednesday and then look back on the Sunday and then look ahead to the following Sunday so I'd be interested to hear what, what people would prefer um, so please do leave a, leave a comment on, on YouTube or on uh, or, tw- or tweet me um, one suggestion that I have had that we will be implementing when the season starts is there's going to be a phone number that you can ring up and leave a voicemail and hopefully we can get some fan interaction on the uh, on the podcast throughout the season so the idea of that is after the game or even during the week you can ring and um, it'll be a landline number it'll go straight to voicemail and you can leave a message to be included on on the podcast and obviously i'll hopefully we'll be able to develop a bit of a fan section uh, in the podcast throughout the season so we can hear some of your uh, views throughout the campaign and um, may even try and do some of that live at some point as well which would be interesting um yeah i'm sure i'm sure it would so Thanks for watching as always, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel and subscribe to the podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, Audio, Boom, um, give it a like, drop us a comment, retweet on Twitter, you know all the the various things to spread the word Uh, and I'll see you next week.